morning. Here's our next project, and I'm excited about this one. This one's for me. This is an old uh, curio cabinet or bookcase, probably dating from the late Victorian era, I assume, that I picked up at an auction. Um, it appears to be mahogany, but I really won't know until this finish comes off. It has a single door, and at one time it had a, a skeleton key, but that the escutcheon's missing and the hole has been walled out, and I believe that is a replacement latch. It has three shelves, which I've taken out, and the back is actually in pretty good shape. You can see it's, it's panel construction. I have no idea what they stored on the bottom shelf. It looks like cans, but whatever it was, it's eaten through the finish, so this is going to have to be redone. And really, the only big missing piece is the right side of, of this. We have the shell, we have the flowers. We're missing the flowers on that side. I may wind up, and I know I hate to say it, but I may wind up removing the flowers on this side and just leaving the shell. It's got gorgeous padded feet, which I really like. And the only decoration on it are these applied pieces here. Um, it's always difficult dating production furniture from this period, but let me show you what I know and, and what I can tell. If you look at the glass, you can see that it's wavy. In fact, right here, it almost looks like there's a little indentation on the glass. It's really cool looking, but... I doubt I'm going to be able to capture it for you. Uh, wavy glass, you know, they still manufacture it today, but in general, 1903 is when they started to produce plate glass. You know, when this glass was manufactured and when it went in, you can't be certain, but that kind of gives you a little bit of a, an idea. The finish, if you look, has alligatored, which means that it's it's gotten very rough. It's because the... Uh, elastic portion of the finish has deteriorated and it's gotten almost crystalline. Uh, this finish is completely failed. I tested the finish and it's shellac. Uh, generally you can date furniture, lacquer, when you have a lacquer finish and a shellac finish the number to remember is 1920. None of this stuff is exact but it gives you an idea. And then if we come around back and you look at the panel construction on the rear, and again, it's all age appropriate, and it looks to be correct. If you focus in on these trim pieces here, and I'll show you what I'm going to show you right here, right there, that's a wire nail. Now, wire nails tend to be dated around the Industrial Revolution, uh, 1880 or a little bit earlier. Now, of course, you know, anything is, is capable of being changed, or maybe a manufacturer had these nails. Nothing is absolute, but you put the whole thing together with the style of the uh, piece, and I would say it's probably, you know, late 1800s, very, very early 1900s. Obviously, we have slot-headed screws. These are machine-made by the looks of things. Again, consistent with that age period. Uh, they turned to Phillips heads sometime after World War II. Uh, Phillips heads were developed for the auto industry after World War II. Slotted screws, wire nails. If you look in raking light at the back panel, you don't see any hand planing marks. You don't see any saw blade marks. And again, that would also indicate to me post-industrial revolution, post-1820. So if I had to guess, I would say this is probably, I'm sorry, 1880. I would have to guess this is probably the last 10 minutes of the of the 19th century, the first five minutes, first couple of minutes of the of the 20th century. So let's let's date it right around 1900, 18, 1890 to 1900. Uh, if you look at the top here, there's this the top stops and this continues. This to me indicates it was probably part of a built-in where it's set into a uh, a finished wall. Maybe paneling came down over here. It has, you know, obviously some manufacturing chalk markings on it. The back legs are plain. The side is all glass, which is gorgeous. It's in no cracks. And 
the front has the single door and there's no cracks anywhere in any of the glass. So my plan for this is to refinish it. Let me tell you about refinishing old furniture. I know everybody creeps out and says, oh my gosh, you're going to ruin the value of an antique piece by refinishing it. That's, in my opinion, it's just not true. Uh, there are very few pieces that need to be left in it, their original finish. Those are pieces that are historically significant. If somebody can tell me that uh, Gustav Stickley did this in his arts and crafts class in elementary school, I'll leave it uh, as it is. But this piece is going to go into my home. I want it to be, I want it to look nice. And finish is more than just appearance. The finish protects the wood. And a lot of uh, nice pieces of old American manufactured furniture have deteriorated because people won't refinish them. Antiques Roadshow was responsible for that thought. Uh, I, my understanding is on their website now they have a disclaimer on that indicating that the vast majority of old furniture, particularly manufactured furniture, uh, should be refinished. The refinish should be preserved on the wood to protect the piece for years to come. This piece has three shelves. Uh, they're off to the side and they'll go in. If, you, if we look at the hinges, they very well may be original. They appear to be correct. This is the way the finish looked when it came from the factory. And that's the intact shellac. That's the finish I'm going to apply. I am going to re-shellac this. I'm not going to use lacquer. And you can look here and see how pretty that finish was. So that's the way this thing was when it came from the factory. You know, here's the, the clip that holds up the, the shells. You can see we got a screw and a nail. Again, a wire nail, a manufactured screw. And it's, you know, it's staying in what we, what I call... You know, this real dark molasses looking stain, uh, very, very opaque, uh, dark, dark, dark brown. So, there we go. I found this little piece of wood or veneer laying behind this applied piece. And I don't know if it, it probably came from the back of it. I'll hang on to it and if I can get it reapplied, I will. But again, you can see pretty much everywhere that shellac finish is alligator and it's going to come out. So this is going to be a fun project because this one's going to be for me. When I'm through with it, it's going to my office. And we'll strip it and we'll do whatever repairs we need to do and we'll refinish it. Uh, this time we'll stain it and we'll refinish it in shellac, which I'll spray on. We have to be extremely, extremely careful of the glass. We don't want to break the glass. And I will make a decision on what I want to do with this, um, I, I can buy a replacement piece with a replacement escutcheon, but this has been wallowed out pretty good. Uh, if I remove this here, you can see that this has been toyed with over the years, and these pieces, I believe, have been removed to accommodate the new one. Uh, frankly, what I'm thinking about doing, I have a collection of old poles from various antique pieces I've restored. I'm thinking about cutting this square, inlaying a piece of mahogany here, and then just attaching a single pull so I don't have to uh, worry about losing a skeleton key and I can get in and out of this as I, as I need. But I'm excited about this. I love uh, working on this type of stuff and like I say, this one's for me. I can do it however I want. And um, when it's done, it's gonna go into our, go into our home. And we got the uh, door off. There's where the hinges sat, and down there, and you can see the hinges went in with manufactured screws. These aren't uh, handmade screws, they're manufactured screws. You always want to keep your screws organized so they go back in the same holes. This is the bottom hinge, that's the bottom screw, the top screw. And I'll get them taped in there in just a minute. I wanted to also show you the inside of the door. I removed the lock, which obviously we suspected was not original, and clearly there's been three different lock sets drilled into this door over the years, and you can see just how augered out this uh, escutcheon hole is, this keyhole. So I'm going to fill all these holes in. I'm going to inlay a piece of uh, wood in here 
and um, refinish it, and then we will mount some kind of a pole. Uh, you can see the original finish on the inside. It appears to be mahogany and it's shellac. The way to test to see if a finish is shellac is to see if it dissolves in a little bit of uh, alcohol, denatured alcohol. Just put a drop of denatured alcohol in some inconspicuous part. Give it about 30 seconds or so and then take a Q-tip and see. Put a Q-tip on it and if it's sticky, it's shellac. Uh, you can do the same thing to identify if it's lacquer using lacquer thinner and then if it's a polyurethane or a varnish, it pretty much won't dissolve with anything short of a, a stripper. So that's a good thing to know. But after a while you sort of just get get a feel for it by the way it looks. But this is a shellac finish. So we're making progress. The next thing we'll do is get uh, everything masked up and then we will begin to strip this piece.
here she is after being completely stripped. I used a commercial methylene chloride stripper to take off the rotten shellac finish. The shellac finish came off like brown sticky syrup. It was a very difficult strip job. I basically applied it, let it sit for a little while, tried to scrape off what I could, but most of it I actually had to take off with an alcohol soaked rag. Alcohol because alcohol is the solvent for shellac. And there we go. I've also got the inside stripped. What you see there is residue from tape that I couldn't get up, but that will come up when I light sand this. I'm not 100% sure what this wood is on the top. I'm thinking it very well may be what they call gum wood, which back in this era they did a lot of uh, gum wood, which is a cheaper American hardwood, and then used the molasses finish, which is that real deep, opaque Van Dyke brown to hide it and make it look like either walnut or mahogany. The door, however, is mahogany. And that's what it looks like stripped off. And I think what I'm going to do here is square this hole off and then lay a piece of mahogany in there to take care of that. But that's the end of day, day one. We had it uh, masked and disassembled and completely stripped. We'll come back tomorrow, we'll do some light sanding and we'll start to refinish it. Right now I'm thinking about a, uh, a lacquer finish. I'll shoot a seal coat, uh, sand that, shoot a lacquer coat, and then lay on a coat of Van Dyke brown glaze. Let that dry and shoot a final coat on there and I think it'll look pretty much just the way it did uh, color wise before we stripped it off. But it was a, uh, a pretty tedious and a pretty, uh, pretty uncomfortable strip job, to be honest with you. I was in a respirator for three hours, and uh, this little small piece took all that time to get stripped off. But it'll be beautiful when it's done. Okay. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.